Humans are really amazing at social interaction. We don't even know how we do it, we simply do it. That makes my job very difficult because I need to figure out how we do it to make these machines also do it. This is a, a social robot or a humanoid robot and uh, it has this typical human-like shape. And it's really built to interact with us. Uh, so this is really something to facilitate that kind of interaction between man and machine. And I'm really looking at how we can improve AI to understand people better and how to make the interaction with machines feel more natural. Uh, which means that we have to also know about the human side of things and not only about the technical side of things. Yeah, a, a very prominent dimension in conversations is em emotions. Humans uh, are very emotionally, and, and conversations are not only about the contents, but also about the emotions. We have all kinds of rules of how to play this game of social interaction that these machines still don't understand. And so that's kind of the key thing we're looking for, how to make that magic happen, that people feel comfortable with these machines, and also know what these machines can actually do for them. And that's where AI comes in. And AI will need to make these machines understand context, make sense of it, like we do. Make these machines adapt to what we feel, what we do. Um, and that's one of the key challenges in AI of today. We start with the end user because they can tell you more about what they need, what they want and what, to, what you should build. Learning about people really helps to design the technology better. Not quite. Let me repeat myself. The needs and values of the people are very essential and we need as designers to really understand them, but we also need to give the robot the abilities to understand those needs and values also in the best possible way. The future of these interfaces, I imagine as that they could be our new assistants, our companions, our coaches. It helps children at schools to perhaps spend more time on the problems with math, where a teacher has, doesn't have the time to help them out all the time. Wow. I'd really like to think of these social robots in an educational setting as an assistant of a teacher. Uh, so a teacher doesn't have all the time of the world and then these robots can really uh, help out. It's very, very cool to see the children really respond uh, to the robot and, and figure out their relationship with the robot. This, this dynamic is very interesting to, to experience and to see uh, happening. Yeah. Uh, and that relationship between the robotness, this quirky character, and the, and the child, how children respond to that quirky character is, is for me truly amazing. Yeah. It, you see the magic happening in front of your eyes, yeah. So I can combine the coolest technology that are around social robots and really help people with it to make them smile. Th that's the big end goal and uh, we are getting there, but uh, there, there's still a lot to do. I think that there is a lot of technology now and now is really the time to make a change in society. At The View, what, what is really cool about my colleagues here is that they really also like to use technology to improve the lives of people. Um, and all of these colleagues have their own expertise that helps me create that kind of technology. And they are also really interested in looking at the effects of this kind of technology on our society. The key issue here really is to make it really understand what we need and to make useful applications with that kind of technology. If we can make that happen, uh, my dream would come true.